have a board here that has the bonding primer and one layer of the sapphire blue skimstone on that Katrina showed you. Um, this has been, this is dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the second layer. Now one thing um, that's important to point out when you're mixing um, skimstone is you wanna always have some of your tinted uh, solution, type one solution in reserve. Because if you end up adding too much powder into your mix and it freezes up on you, you're gonna need to you know, wet it a little bit more. You're gonna be adding like powder and tinted type one solution in small increments till you get the, uh, the consistency that you want. Now for the second layer, I've, I've taken that um, original mix and added more tinted type one solution to it because I want it to be a little bit thinner. So each progressive layer that you do with a skimstone is gonna be mixed a little bit thinner. So this is about one, one to one now, and you can see that it's dripping off the, off the stick. So the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was the uh, trowels. So Katrina has been using a hard steel finishing trowel, and that is definitely an option. There is another option that you have, and that's to use a Japanese trowel. Now this trowel is also stainless steel, but it's a thinner steel, so it's very lightweight and is, so is a little more flexible. This is a trowel that I prefer to use with a skimstone, but you could use, uh, absolutely use the hard finishing trowel. Some people even like to do um, skimstone just with a flat uh, blade, like a taping knife. So you definitely have those options, but it does need to be a steel blade. So I'm going to take my now thinned, a little bit thinner skimstone mix and pour out a small amount. Okay, so the first layer, we were just trying to get like an even coverage, getting the product on the surface. Your second layer is generally gonna be what I think of as more of like my interest layer. So I wanna create the, um, some organic pattern just by using my trowel. So the way that I do that is rather than doing a big sweeping motion, I do shorter strokes and kind of vary my pressure a little bit. I'm still pressing hard because you want to compress the skim stone. That's how you get the strength and the durability. But I'm taking shorter strokes and changing the direction of my hand as I'm working. So that's going to create a really nice organic pattern with you know really subtle highs and lows and you're going to naturally get kind of lighter areas and darker areas. So as I'm moving across the, the floor or moving across my surface. When I go, when I run out of skimstone, I've made an irregular edge. Now I'm gonna pour the next pour away from that and work back into it. So I don't wanna pour wet product into the wet surface. So I like to use both sides of my trowel. And which is fine. And then also, if you ever ha you know, have any buildup of the product on your trowel, you can always scoop it back in and remix it. And another important tip is that each time you go to pour out more skimstone, you want to give it a little stir. Okay, I just need a little bit more down here. So we're gonna let this dry and come back and I'm gonna show you how to apply a Modelo pattern. Our second layer of skimstone has now dried and I want you to notice something. The skimstone dries quite a bit lighter than um, how it looks when it goes on wet. So that's something always to keep in mind. This is definitely a bright color. It might be really suitable more for a Moroccan style interior scheme or a Mediterranean style scheme, but also this color blue, the sapphire, um, looks great mixed in with other colors, which you're going to see in a minute. But first we're going to, before we put the Modelo on, we're going to give it a light sand. It's just got a little, some rough areas. We're just knocking down those. You don't want to over sand, don't make this a big project. Just want to get a smooth surface to put the Modelo on, and then, of course, you want to wipe it off really well. Okay, so I have our Modelo pattern that we're gonna be putting on right here. So what these are, the Modelo 
masking patterns or masking stencils as we call them are one-time use adhesive back patterns are cut from um, a vinyl material and um, we have that literally thousands of designs that can be custom sized, cut to order, or ordered in standard sizes. And again, as I said earlier, they go on all different types of surfaces, walls, floors, ceilings, wood, furniture, you, know, you name it, any hard surface, um, they work great on. And they really work fabulous with skimstone. And it really kind of takes the skimstone, which is beautiful in and of itself, to a whole nother level. And then you have all these decorative possibilities. You can bring in other colors. You can tie it into your decorating scheme. So it really gives you a lot more op options artistically and creatively. So what they are is the vinyl is actually um, cut and then the, the pattern area generally is removed. Then um, we put on uh, the transfer tape which is the, the kind of this translucent tape that's on top that holds the pattern in place until we get it transferred on the surface. So it's kind of like there's three layers here, the transfer tape, the vinyl in the middle, and on the back, there's what we call backing paper, which is just like a heavy waxed paper, and that's protecting the adhesive side of the vinyl. So we include a squeegee with, um, with your order, and what you're gonna do is take your pattern, before you start laying on a hard surface, and go over it with your squeegee because we want to make sure that the transfer tape is um, bonding well to the vinyl so that the backing paper will come off cleanly and easily. So you want to go ahead and burnish both sides. Now when you're placing your pattern, you want to place it with the backing paper side down and usually it's stamped backing paper on the back. So you're gonna place that down because that's gonna come off and expose the adhesive on that side. So you would you know, get your pattern in position. You can use pieces of tape to hold it in place. What I'm gonna do is one of our kind of hinge methods that will allow you to transfer the pattern exactly where you want it to be is to take a piece of tape and run it down the middle of the pattern. Okay, so I've got it where I want it. Maybe I'm gonna shift it a little bit. You wanna get it exactly where you want it to end up because once it's down and burnished, you're not going to remove it. Um, so you won't be able to move it. So what you're gonna do then is flip this back and we're gonna take off the backing paper. So we're gonna start with one at one edge. I peel the backing paper off slowly so you can see that that's exposing the adhesive there. So I peel it slowly and at a 180 degree angle. So I wanna make sure as I'm watching the edge that none of the vinyl is sticking to the backing paper because I wanna get a nice clean release. So I do that slowly and carefully. And then you can take a scissors or a craft knife or you can even rip it if you want. But you're gonna cut away that flap of backing paper, okay? So now that that's exposed, I've got my tape here holding it in place. I'm just gonna take this and kind of allow it to roll slowly onto the surface while I smooth it with my hand. Take my squeegee, give that a quick burnish. Now I can remove this tape because I've got the Modelo pattern exactly where I want it. held securely in place by the adhesive here. So now I'm going to take this and flip this back. And again, peel the backing paper kind of from this edge, looking all along as I go to make sure that the vinyl is releasing. And that's why you do that burnishing. That's a really important step. Okay. Um, another point I wanted to make is after you've exposed the adhesive, do not let the pattern fold in on itself. Um, it will be very difficult to get apart. So it's very simple, very forgiving. Um, you just need to follow the basic steps. Take it slow, you'll get more comfortable with it as you do more Modelo work. Okay. So I'll burnish that all now really well. So now that I have the Modelo transferred onto the surface, now and only now do I want to remove the transfer tape. So I'm gonna take the transfer tape and peel from the edge, still going at 180 degree angle. And you do wanna go slowly. This is 
you know, sticking, it should stick very well to the skimstone surface. But just in case you forgot to burnish or you had a little rough patch and the vinyl might not want to stick as well, you want to do this slowly. Sometimes I'll push down with my hand while I'm peeling back. Okay, I've got my transfer tape off. I want to give it one more burnish now to make sure that the vinyl is down securely on the surface. So I'm going to be troweling skimstone through this now. So I want to make sure that that's nice and snug. And what I'm going to do, you can see where the, the pattern comes close to the edge. I'm just going to protect that. I'm just going to run some tape there so I don't get my next color um, in this outside area, which is not where I want it. Now I've decided for the pattern on this, I'm going to alter the color slightly. And I like to do that a lot. So if you look at the finished pattern, you can see that it's a little bit darker, a little, I'm bringing in another color. So I'm going to take the sapphire blue um, mix that we have, and I'm going to mix it with another color called mocha, which is a nice soft brown color. And that's going to kind of neutralize it, give me this really pretty kind of denim color. So I'm going to get my gloves back on for the mixing. I have my two colors here that I want to use. So one is the, the same color that we used in the background, which is the four ounce sapphire blue. And then the other color is mocha. And this is also at four ounce uh, tin strength. So I'm gonna make this really simple, really simple ratio. I'm gonna use one part of the sapphire blue and one part of the mocha. So I have a little cup here. And so I want to make sure before I um, pour this out that I stir this really well because I want to have like consistent color and the color does tend to settle. So you're always, always a good idea before you start anything to give it a stir. So I'm just going to pour in a cup full of that and do the same with the sapphire. Okay, so mix the sapphire and the mocha, and now I have a denim color. So we just need to add in the powder, which we've shown you how to do. I want to give the color a quick stir, make sure that that's blended well, and I'm going to add the powder a little bit at a time. With the Modelo pattern on here, I want to mix this up now a little bit thicker again because I, want it, I don't want it to bleed under the edges of the Modelo. And um, what happens is the skimstone, you know, is a porous surface. So if the, if the skimstone kind of gets sucked into that surface, once it's, you know, passed under the surface, then it can go, go out. So that's why um, I sanded it to make it a little bit smoother. And I want to make sure that we burnish it really well. And then we'll mix this up a little bit thicker. What's going to happen with this sample is we're going to actually, after we do the Modelo, we're going to remove that, the Modelo pattern, and then do another coat over the whole thing. So this is what we call an embedded pattern. So if there is any bleed under, that will kind of take care of it also. But just to be safe, mix it up a little bit thicker. So we're just going to go ahead and pour some of this on the surface. Won't need a lot. We can always add more. So now I'm just going to trowel this around. So we just actually do this the same way that we did the background, using both sides of my trowel. Because I want to have like a little bit of texture in the pattern. I don't want it to be totally flat and smooth. So I'm just going to just creating some light surface texture. But I am pulling it tight. So notice how you can see the Modelo pattern through this. I don't want to cover it like that. You want to pull it tight. So I'm up on the edge of the trowel. You fill the whole thing in. I'm taking care not to get outside in the background. So, 
You want to let the, the skimstone dry before we remove the modello. If you, if you start pulling it off too soon, the skimstone is going to be wet around the edge and it's going to, these crumbs are kind of going to fall in on your background. So you want to let this dry. It's going to dry pretty quick. I mean, I would say 15 minutes and um, then remove the modello. So we're going to do that and we'll be back. All right, I'm using a weaving tool or a pick tool, which is what we call it, to remove the Modelo pattern. We also include this with your order, and it's a little needle. It comes with a, with a cork on it, so it's very safe when you're not using it. Um, but what you do is you just use this and just grab just the edge. You don't want to dig into your surface, so you're just going to grab the edge of the pattern, lift it up, and get that all off. Okay, so now we're ready for our final skimstone layer. This is going to be an embedded pattern, as I said. So the color that I'm going to use now is actually the same color that I used on the background. Uh, I'm sorry, on the Modelo pattern, but it's now mixed at a two ounce tint strength. So it's the, the combination of sapphire blue, two ounce sapphire blue, and two ounce mocha. So it's gonna be lighter than this, and it'll just kind of soften this bright color in the background. So I've mixed this up, it's ready to go. And it's mixed, I've mixed it thin again. So the, on your final layer, usually with skimstone, you traditionally will do three layers. You, you, know, you start with your kind of base coat overall, then you do your nice little texture interest layer, and then your last layer is just to pull that all together. So you're gonna mix that up a little bit thinner, not more than one part um, tinted type one solution to one part powder. So I'll pour this out and I'm gonna use a tight trowel now because I'm embedding this. So I'm gonna really push this in and I wanna actually see some of that blue background coming through. So won't, that won't happen unless I press hard. So you can hopefully see that I'm really pushing on the trowel. And giving it a nice, tight embedding coat. What also happens when I'm going over this with the trowel is that it's actually burnishing this raised layer of pattern underneath. So it's gonna make that become a little bit darker and make it become a little bit more pronounced. 